I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video how to master your state of being to manifest your reality. Because the thing is that if you can learn to master your own state of being, this is actually where the true manifestation power comes. In my experience, unless I take responsibility of my own state of being, there is no manifestation power and it's very difficult to manifest my desire. So I'm going to be sharing with you how to master your state of being to make it so that you can manifest what you want in a way that just feels so much easier in comparison to when you believe that you have to sacrifice your state of being in order to get what it is that you actually want. So if you're new to this channel, what I want you to do is I want you to hit that subscribe button. I want you to hit that notification bell. Also, if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one personally, there's two ways to do it right now. The first way is through single sessions and the second way is through email coaching and the details for both of those things will be down below. Now, the first thing that I want to share with you in this video is to value your state, to value your state. That's the thing, right? Is do you actually value your own state? I'm going to ask you a question to start off this video. I want you to think back to many times in your life where you decided, you know what? I'm not going to value my state of being right now. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that at the expense of my state of being. And I want you to think back to that type of experience. First of all, how did you feel? And what was the reflection in your life like externally, externally? What happens is that if you don't value your state, you let your state become chaotic in a way that doesn't feel structured and good to you. There's no peace, there's no order, there's no you know groundedness in your state, right? What happens is that the external usually starts to reflect that. Now, I want you to think back to that experience and I want you to just kind of, you know, come to the perhaps the awareness. I know everyone's different, but I'm speaking generally here, but for me, right? Like if I think back to any of these types of experiences where I didn't value my state, that was probably, you know, one of the worst times of my life, my entire life. If I look back at all the different types of experiences that I had, when I decided, you know what, I'm not going to value my state. I'm going to let go of my state of being. I'm just going to, you know, get what I want and then screw my state. My state doesn't matter. I'm going to get what I want. S screw my state. It was not a fun time. It was not a fun time. And ironically, which is not ironic at all, but actually, you know, you could say ironically, I didn't even get what I wanted either. <laughs> so it's like when you don't value your state, not only do you start to feel absolutely terrible, the irony of it all, the, the joke and the sham of this entire thing is that I don't know what it is like in the universe, the way the universe is like encoded or something, maybe something about consciousness because consciousness perhaps wants to play a game where we're in a consent, where, where we are in a consensus reality, right? Where you're in a reality and somebody else is in a reality and we can all agree to kind of be in this reality together. And that's manifestation. Part of manifestation sometimes is just exchanging energy and being in this consensus reality where other people actually can see what you see at an energetic and vibrational level. Unless you come to that awareness, how are you going to attract things to maybe, you know, it's good. How are you going to get people to give you things or to exchange things in the form of money or to give you something of value where you can give something of value back? What is even value? Value is where you value your state. You achieve a certain level of consciousness and awareness and you want others to also say, you know what, you can, you can be in that same state. You want them to become aware that they can also create their state, maybe in the exact way that you're doing or maybe in their own way. But nonetheless though, valuing your state is one of the most important steps to having true manifestation power. Because if you don't value your state, what do you even have to va give value to? How can you give value? What value do you have to provide to the world if you can't even value your own state? Because you might think that you're providing value to somebody, but if it's come from a space of sacrificing your state, are you really providing value? Because what you're saying at an energetic level, even if you're doing things and trying to help people from a space of you don't feel good, what you're energetically sending out is that, oh, you know, what's the best thing to do is to sacrifice how you feel to get what you want. You're sending out that message energetically. And that's really what you're giving to people is you're giving that energetic signature of, yeah, the best way to live life is I can't feel how I want to feel. And you're giving off that example. So you're basically spreading the message that, oh, you know, you shouldn't feel how you want to feel. 
even if you're saying something else verbally, even if you're having good intentions, maybe you have some intentions logical in your mind, if your actions aren't aligned with those intentions, you're not gonna be able to manifest it because people are gonna feel that. You're not going to be able to manifest what you want if you feel like you're sacrificing your energy and you can't really be connected to the type of person that you actually want to be. Now, the second thing that I want to share with you in this video is to care about how you feel. This is kind of similar to valuing your state, but it's communicated in a way that is probably a little bit more relatable. It's just about genuinely caring about how you feel. Do you really care about how you feel truly? Do you really care? And of course, people might be very quick to say, yes, I care about how I feel. Of course, I care about how I feel. And maybe even you get a little bit defensive. It's like, of course, what do you mean? Of course, of course, I care about how I feel. But it's like, do you, do you? Sometimes caring about how you feel means not doing certain things that you used to do, which can be scary. Because in the evolution of consciousness, what happens is that there's always gonna be something that you used to do that no longer makes you feel how you want to feel. And oftentimes, that's the biggest block to your manifestations is that thing that you used to do that you're afraid to let go of because you're holding on to it, but you know that it's not making you feel good deep inside. It could be anything. You know that there's some type of action, some type of thought program, some type of friend, some type of relationship. There's something in your life, maybe even a living space, there's something that you're attached to that's not making you feel good and you know that to let go of that is a transition into a totally different version of who you are. And let's be honest, that's scary. That's part of the evolution of consciousness is letting go of these things that you used to do that no longer make you feel good. And if you're courageous enough, if you're bold enough, you will let go of that thing that's making you scared. You'll, you'll let go of that thing that's making you feel negative. You'll let go of that thing that's making you not feel connected to who you want to be. You got to care about how you feel. You got to truly care. You got to really care about your state, but you got to value your state and the same thing communicate in different ways. You got to care about how you feel. You have to care. I mean, you don't have to, but what if you don't? What happens? You just don't feel good. <laughs> Obviously, right? But it's so obvious because remember, it's easy to listen to something like this and say, like, oh, that's so obvious, but we have to always be, you know, wise enough to look at our past mistakes and be like you know what there's been times where i didn't care about how i feel and you know what that led to it led to chaos it led to misery it led to suffering for myself and for others and you have to be honest you have to be honest because you gotta be like you know what yes i didn't care about how i felt in the past and it led to me feeling terrible how else are we going to evolve if we don't have that contrast that's isn't that what evolution really is isn't that the evolution of consciousness is to see the contrast of not caring about how you feel, not being selfless, not valuing consciousness and the evolution of all beings, right? You gotta, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that what it's all about is seeing that contrast? How would we have a reference point for what is better or worse or what is more evolved or less evolved or you could say more moral, you know, moral is interesting, morality is an interesting concept because if you have consciousness, I believe that there's a connection between consciousness and like morality and, you know, being a good person, a truly good person. If you believe in a concept of true good, how would you get to somebody, how did somebody become truly good? By caring about how they feel, which somebody else might look at that person and say, oh, they're egotistical, you know, but really when you're judging that person for being egotistical, how do you feel? judgment is one of the lowest frequencies, right? So when, you, when you're judging somebody, when you say, I care about how I feel, do you? If you cared about how you feel, would you be in, a, in an argumentative conflict energy like that? I'm not saying that you don't need boundaries. I'm not saying that sometimes there isn't a place to have a little bit of conflict, to have a little bit of chaotic energy in a controlled fashion, to maybe use your voice a little bit. But the thing is that through that process, it has to be coming from a space of intelligence, not from a space of defending an emotional state that's making you feel terrible. <laughs> that's the honest truth. Okay, so to conclude this video, what I want to share with you as well, which is important, where it's if you connect all of this with this final point, you're going to be able to really manifest your reality by mastering your state of being. This concept of manifestation through mastering your state of being will be absolutely something that you experience if you do this final thing, which is to take control of your thoughts. Now look, you cannot master your state of being unless there's some level of control of your thinking process. 
Because in my personal experience, your behavioral patterns come from your thinking process. The types of behaviors that you do in the world, the type of person that you show up as when it comes to how you show up in the world and how you talk to people and what you do in the world starts with your thinking. It literally starts with your thinking. There is no being without thinking in my personal experience. If you're not if you're not thinking who you are, you're not going to be able to be who you want to be truly because who you become it starts from who you think about yourself, who you think yourself to be. Right? Good that came out wrong for a second there. <laughs> not the way that I wanted, but it's who you think who you think yourself as you become, right? What you think you become. When people talk about oh I am you know, are the two most powerful words because what you say after you become, it's true. It sounds cliche. It sounds like, oh, you know, everybody talks about that. It sounds cliche, but it's the truth. It's the actual truth. What you think about you live to, they will become. And in my experience, um, until I took responsibility for how I think, how I see myself, the world that I want to see in the world, how I want to see society, how I want to view my life, how I want to structure my life, how I want to manifest my reality, until I took responsibility of how I was thinking, my state of being would always be suffering. And of course, there'd be little glimpses of peace, but it was almost like clouded by this, this, you know, these goggles of like judgment and despair and anger and fear. And I still feel all those emotions sometimes, but the difference, you know, you want to know what the difference is? The difference is that I see them in a different way and I don't allow these feelings to define who I am. That's the key here, right? My, the definition of who I am is not dependent on a temporary emotion. Temporary emotions happen no matter what, regardless of if I'm defining my state of being or not, right? The temp, you're going to feel, you know, some type of resistance and some type of emotions no matter what. But the beauty of evolving your consciousness is that you're still going to feel sometimes those emotions still, but at least at least now, which is much more than an at least, but you know, to say the least, at least, <laughs> at least you get to control what type of reality you manifest. You're a conscious creator, right? Isn't that the most beautiful thing? Because think about it. There's two realities that exist for you. Well, in one reality, you you feel temporary emotions and sometimes you don't feel exactly how you want to feel, right? In another reality, you also sometimes feel temporary emotions pretty much always, no matter what, because sometimes feeling resistance is in a way inevitable. You still feel that resistance, inevitably so, but at least now you're in a reality and a belief system that resonates with your soul, with who you truly are. And you get to be with others that also see your reality in, in a similar way. And if they can't agree on that consensus reality, they won't be a part of your energy. They won't be a part of your frequency. They won't be a part of your vibration. They just won't be a part of your field because, because they're in a different energy and that's okay. But this step, this first step to this process is taking control of your thoughts. Unless you take control of your thoughts, you're not going to be able to really become a master of your state of being because it begins with who you define yourself as. It's balancing who you decide to be and then trusting yourself to become it. It's the ultimate balance of intention and surrender. It's scary to do this. It's scary. But you know why it's scary? Because this, this, this type of energy that I'm sharing here involves a serious level of responsibility and it is serious. It's not just a joke. It's not just like, oh, you know, life's one big cosmic sham and it's one big, no, it, there is a level of serious because this is the path of righteousness, you could say in a way. This is the path of truth, you could say in a way. It is the truth. It's the one true frequency. It's not even that like, oh, there's your personal truth. It's the truth. You want to know why it's the truth and not just like, oh, you have your personal truth and I have mine. You know what? You want to know why it's the truth? It's the truth because we want everybody to agree on the truth. That's what makes consciousness beautiful. If we can't all agree on one true frequency for all, for every being, you know, not to say that, not, that there's not going to be disagreements, not to say that there's not going to be, you know, conflict, not to say that there's not going to be different people with different belief systems, but if it gets too different, there has to be somebody to say, you know what? I see this in this way and I disagree with that type of thinking. That's the path of righteousness. That's the path of truth. That's the path of 
devotion and commitment and discipline and you could even say awakening you could say the evolution of consciousness and anything that you believe to be good and right and you could even say moral in my opinion this comes from valuing your state of consciousness valuing your state of being and understanding that other beings are real and there's also beings that don't have that type of mentality and don't have that type of consciousness and don't have that type of desire to up level themselves and take others along with them in an inspirational and uplifting way there's two types of people in the world there's a type of person that values their state of consciousness and wants to bring as many people as possible that think in a similar way and create a vortex of energy that you know where we can all create peace and joy and love together and there's another type of person that does almost the opposite you can even see it almost like a demonic way and the key here is not to judge people it's not to be like oh yeah there's there's the bad people and there's the good people no it's about looking at your past where were you not valuing your state this is a spiritual warfare with you and yourself nobody else is involved here of course that sounds contradictory to what i just said but that's the mentality that you need to co-create with others is to moment to moment take 100 percent responsibility of your state your actions your decisions who you decide to be and understand that you make your choices and you cannot infringe upon anybody else's choices and their true free will that's what it means to you know participate in a consensus reality where we can all co-create together and this means that it starts with mastering your state of being valuing your state of consciousness and taking control of your thoughts there's no other way to say it it's just the truth like you could be discreet about it you don't have to always talk about like oh it's like if you're let's say working a part-time job or you're like at a job you don't have to be like oh yeah your thoughts create your reality no because you're already all in the consensus reality you don't need to be constantly talking about it but sometimes in this case i am talking about it and there's no better way to say it other than to be like you know what your your thoughts create your reality and your thoughts are going to impact your state of being and the decision to control your thoughts is also a decision that is going to help you to master your being. The, even the belief system to say that you have conscious control over your thinking, that is an entire paradigm in and of itself. Consider this, that many people believe that they don't have control over their thoughts. That's an entire way of, isn't that a, an entire frequency and vibration in and of itself? That there's so many different vibrations and levels to reality that like there's one level of reality where there's a whole belief system and belief structure or a date where where you don't think of a they 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 you where you you could be in this belief system it could be you right where you believe that you don't have control over your thoughts but consider that you do have control over your thoughts and that is the first step to mastering your state of being and this is in my opinion where you start to get into true good true good look i don't really i used to not believe in a concept of true good but i'm starting to get to the point in my life just to include this video like if true good did exist if it did exist right if true good existed i think it would come from a desire to evolve consciousness there would be no other way that true good could possibly develop because what would be good good is first of all that i exist and it's the acknowledgement that other beings exist which sounds obvious but it's not obvious this is not an obvious thing because it's obvious if you're already a very conscious being and you don't feel the need to talk about it. But for many beings, it's not obvious. So I want to be the one to explicitly share that taking control of your thoughts is the first step to mastering your state of being. And that's going to help you to start manifesting your reality. That's what it means to manifest your reality. That's what it means to manifest reality through your consciousness is to live in a vibration where you value the being in the vibration that you desire over not having that. Because you can consider that like value, having the value system of, I want to be in a frequency and vibration where I'm creating my vibration from the inside out. That's a desire that comes from, you know, most of the times, lots and lots of contrast to seeing what it's like to not do that, which was probably it was, was probably involving a lot of suffering and pain and resistance and not feeling good and really going into the depths of that to see what that's like. 
if you really have a contrast to see, okay, if I place my focus and attention very, very strongly and deeply on not valuing my state, what is that going to be like? You do that and it's just, it's, it becomes so bad. It becomes so unenjoyable. There's so little peace and joy there. And you notice how it affects other people too, that inevitably so there's a desire to advance to a higher level of vibration, a higher level of frequency to be like, you know what? I value how I feel. It's like, wait, no, this doesn't feel right to me. If you truly want to see a reality where true good is a possibility, I would say that it's very important that you value your state of consciousness and to see how amazing that is in comparison to not. And how that the only way really that you can evolve your consciousness is seeing that contrast and seeing that that is the true desire of consciousness and you, you are consciousness, is to is to value controlling your state of being and to come from that space of being a master of your own frequency. And with that, I conclude this video. Once again, if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one personally, there's only two ways to do that right now. The first way is through single sessions and the second way is through email coaching. And the, detail, the details for both of those ways to do coaching with me and to get in contact with me will be down below both in the comments of this video and in the description box of this video as usual. And as, as usual as well, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next 